Scott Snow is a time management expert and a certified professional coach. He empowers students, entrepreneurs, and executives in the areas of work, life, integration, and personal productivity. In addition, Scott is a board certified music therapist and has an extensive background in creativity and improvisation. His mission is to help you live your life's purpose. So please welcome Scott Snow. Thank you, thank you. In the next hour, you're going to learn how innovators and visionaries manage their time, so you can do the same. Now, the first skill I want to talk about with our four essential time management skills is one that I think is the most powerful and the simplest time management skill you could ever learn. And that skill is identifying your roles. Now, what's a role? We all talk about roles being all the different hats that we wear. Uh, most people that I coach and talk to are usually juggling between 16 and 18 different roles at any given time. So there's a lot of juggling that we all do. And I believe that our fulfillment comes from how well we can transition between all these different roles that we play. Some of our roles we're playing now, and some of them we have to take on now so that we're set up for the future. Now, in social media, you'll see all the time in profiles, Aisha Curry with her little excerpt here, believer, wife, mommy, passionate dual citizen, living in my indestructible bubble of happiness, making people's hearts happy and tummies full. So you see a lot. Every time you see a Twitter profile, Instagram, that you'll see that people are proud of that they do a lot of different things. You'll even see with obituaries in the newspaper that uh, people are, you know, they're a doctor, kung fu expert, all these other things. Again, in, in Twitter here, this guy, life, leadership, business coach, speaker. These are all different areas, main, ad, main areas in your life that you have to really dedicate to continue to cultivate and grow. Best-selling author, thought leader, cancer conqueror, that's a huge one, a big part of who he is and his brand, who he is, uh, what he's been through is all important, runner and world traveler. Ariana Huffington, mother, sister, Huffington Post founder, founder and CEO of Thrive Global, whose mission is to end stress and burnout epidemic. So powerful stuff that you could put in your pro profile too. Now, also, people have many different roles which we'll go through, and some of them are very surprising. You probably don't know that I was a former Olympian. <laughs> With this untouched photo here. I was going for 20 medals, but I only got 18. Though my nephew is really good with Photoshop and he cleaned it up a bit. So, good. So, the main definition here is a, a category, an area in your life that you need daily, weekly, quality time to be fulfilled. And you'll notice when you start getting bummed out and things aren't going well, you can look back and go, oh, you know what? I'm not spending enough time here. Or I'm not managing this transition here. Now, here is a Marine Corps drill sergeant in her role. She's tough, un unrelenting, brutal. Those are some of the qualifications she needs to be successful in that job, in that role. Ruthless, harsh, doesn't waver at all. But if she brings forward those attributes to other roles in her life, like family member or parent, relationships, if she has all these different attributes, that's not going to be successful. Okay? And it's very important to be aware when you have to transition between your roles. You've got your school roles and work roles, family roles, relationship roles, and we're constantly weaving in between all of those roles. If you bring part of yourself if you're still in role A and you're in the next setting, you're going to have trouble. So you can even think of different ways to um, prep yourself. Let's say if you're driving home from work, prepping yourself, listen to your favorite music, deep breaths, roll the window down, chill out. Even just the fact of being aware that you're going into a different arena now, you know, it makes a big difference. When you go to uh, the in-laws, you've got to change gears. I first heard about this role idea from Tony Robbins. 
And he has this book, Time of Your Life, that was really helpful to me. And he does a lot of exploring with all the different roles that you play. An important part of roles, and usually the first step I do when helping someone with their roles, passions, hobbies, and interests. So that's passions, of course, is the most important. Things that if you're not doing, you're going to be miserable. All right? Um, hobbies, of course, we know what that is. And interests could be something you haven't even done yet, but you want to try. It's important to cultivate all of those different things. I'll give you some <coughs> examples of people that very successfully did that. We've got Steve Jobs, who in college focused on calligraphy. He enjoyed calligraphy a lot. He studied it, and that became a profound part of the, the essence of his company. The clarity of the font related to how he created his products, simple. Martha Stewart, of course, made a whole empire out of her hobbies and interests. Warren Buffett with his bridge playing. You know, who knows how that can affect his strategizing for investing. Also, another reason why you want to have a lot of, cultivate a lot of hobbies and interests is those will give you a lot of different perspectives to look at any kind of a problem. Lori Grenier from Shark Tank, her first big breakthrough was a, uh, some kind of a plastic holder for earrings that she ended up selling to JCPenney for $300,000 as her first uh, thing to get her going. A lot of times your passions, hobbies, and interests will be directly related to your roles. That's why it's important to, to do it. And uh, my website is on the page there. You can check it out on the resources page. There's a sheet where you can list your passions, hobbies, and interests, and there's other resources there too. So we have four different types of roles. And this is kind of a system that I've created over the last 20 years. It's worked really well for me and my coaching clients. And the first is the core. That's mind, body, and spirit. It's pretty much you as an individual before you're all these other things and all these other demands. You're a person. You'll hear a lot about self-care and how people, you know, uh, shirk their duties of self-care. Very important. The, the, more, the better you can be, the more you can give to others. If you're sick and if you're run down, if you're not happy, then you're not going to be what you need to be for the other people. So those are the three main areas of a core that I usually think, mind, body, spirit. And you'll see an example here. Giving and receiving. This is how is your money working uh, coming in and also going out? How is your volunteering? How is your, do you have a philanthropy role? Now, sometimes you have a role that, you know, I don't really have enough money to be a ph philanthropist right now. But create that role. Start digging away. Maybe that role could be that you're learning about other people that do it. Or you go to a couple uh, benefit events and start to see how, how things work. You can help out in a lot of different ways. Help out with your time. Personal roles, usually what we would think of as roles, hobbies. I don't know, you play chess, you're in the backgammon, you're a sister, a brother, boyfriend, girlfriend. Any of those would fit under there. And professional, of course, your focus, but also what do you have to be working on to uh, get your dream goal or dream job in a couple years down the road? What should you be doing now that will set you up for them? So that's really important there. As from an uh, example of myself, I'm an entrepreneur, work for myself, self-employed, and I've had to take on a lot, lot of different roles, speaking, getting a lot better at speaking, and networking, all these things you've got to start doing. Maybe the web design, if you can't uh, contract out for it. All right, so here's an example of Tracy. And these are the roles that she came up with. And uh, this Tracy is really kind of a combination of a lot of different clients. So, so for core, she said, I'm a Christian. And for body, she said, lean and strong. For her personal role, she's a single person. Family is certainly an area. And a friend, where she is able to spend time, make time for her friends. Wealth builder, philanthropist, and uh, she's an MBA student. So now with some coaching, and with digging into this a little bit more, asking a lot of questions, we have some added ones that fill out her role list a little bit more. So we talked about her mind, how she, how she keeping her head straight. And she said, well, I could say genius, but that kind of sounds like I'm in love with myself. But we're thinking big here. So she said genius is one of her roles. Instead of single person, soulmate seeker. Makes it a little bit more empowering. You don't want to be... Uh, you don't want to have a negative sounding role. And we've got family friend, just as usual, cancer survivor. Again, 
connected like that other thing I said. And that also connects with role number 12, the volunteer for the No Stomach for Cancer, where that's a key part of her life, what she went through, really key. And she left it out in her roles initially. So when you put your role list together, you've got to think also, what, what big areas am I, uh, am I missing out? Am I leaving out that I'm not aware of it? Yoga instructor, she said, uh, when I said, what do, you, what, what do you have to do every week? You, you don't feel good if you don't do it. Uh, I've got to teach my yoga class. So that's an important area. And then she got into roller derby. So she even came up with a nickname. You have to have a nickname when you're a roller derby person. Hers was uh, Holly Wanna Crack Ya. So. And then we put adventurer, because she really liked the travel part. And that's, that's more like a personality part of her role. All of this is about self-awareness. And some of the reasons you want to do this is that, so let's say you're in an interview for a big internship or a job uh, for a school. You, if you're demonstrating that you have that self-awareness of who you really are, all these different areas, that's something you can talk about in that interview. Well, I'm this, and I'm a cancer survivor, and this affects that, and this is how I manage it all. And professionally, we added a couple of those roles like I did for me. Entrepreneur. You could be thinking of entrepreneurship right now. Marketing expert. She says she really loves marketing. So now she's focused on that. She's reading a lot of extra books on marketing. She's focused on that. She's really, that's become her. It gives you permission to work on it when you identify it as a role and networker. All right. Can anyone say what, anything that they've learned about roles so far? Would you like to share of what you've learned with this perspective of Identifying the different roles in your life? Yeah. I have a lot more roles than I thought. Okay. Good. So that increase in awareness of good. And you want to have a lot of nice roles. You know, that's the richness. Good. Anything else? Anyone else? Yes. Her role doesn't have to be something you're actively doing. It could be kind of part of your role. Hmm. Yeah, you could have up there millionaire as a role. That might get you psyched. Good, great. But you, you know, you might not be a millionaire now. Good, excellent. All right. Now, skill number two, goals and goal setting. I'm sure you've heard a lot about goals. Decide what you want, then write it down. I've been researching goal setting for a long time, and one of the key things is to write them down on paper. In fact, uh, I even have a habit of doing that twice a day. In the morning, I write it, and then before bed, I usually write it in a notebook. And it might just be your top 10 goals. And this starts to get you to hover over those goals. That's why New Year's resolutions don't work, because you visit it once, and then you forget about it. If you're Focusing on it every day, twice a day, a couple times a day. You're always reminding yourself. You're always steeping in those goals, and you'll get a lot more done. You'll be aware of them. We have a lot of excellent leaders. So when you write goals, you want to have some energy behind them. Here's John, uh, John Kennedy. We choose to go to the moon in this decade not because it's easy, but because it's hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Dr. Martin Luther King, listen to this one. We will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. That'll get you energized to work on your goal. Here's an example of a guy who uh, wrote down his goal. Exactly, in 1969, Bruce Lee wrote this here. I'll read it. My definite chief aim. I, Bruce Lee, will be the first highest paid oriental superstar Asian, more politically correct, in the United States. In return, I will give the most exciting performances and render the best of quality in the capacity of an actor. I love how he puts what he's going to do in return, too. He's not just saying what he wants. And so on. He'll have $10 million by 1980. So he's very specific. I will live the way I please and achieve inner harmony and happiness. So a lot of great things there. All right. So the five types. Now, I, I list different types just so you have more tools to be able to use. Let's practice a couple of these here. The first one is a distinction goal. And that's on your sheet there, where it's basically a rule for your life. Exercise 20 minutes every day. Very clear. 
it says the duration, you know, read a marketing book every month. Something that's very specific. So why don't you write down something that could relate to your life here on page two of your handout. Distinction goal. Uh, so basically what you're going to do and then the duration and how often. Exercise aerobically one times 30 a day. Okay, I'll give you 30, 40 seconds for that. And this is just a rule, so specific you could hand it to someone else you don't know and they would know what to do. I'm going to go through it quick too so you get a little idea of each one. A deadline goal. A specific goal or outcome with a deadline. So it's basically a snapshot in time. By June 1st, I'm scuba certified. So a similar way for that. All right, bucket list, what you would think of as a usual bucket list. Attend the Carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. These are big, exciting, something different. Maybe you say you want to yell and live from, Saturday, live from New York, it's Saturday night on Saturday Night Live. We have the uh, sky's the limit, and those are the big whoppers. Think really big for these. I won the Nobel Peace Prize for economics. I'm the welterweight UFC champion. Whatever it is, I'm New York Times bestseller author. And now for the number one goal. And the number one goal is uh, something I learned from uh, a speaker named Brian Tracy, who talks about having the one biggest goal that you can think of that actually activates all of the other goals. So that's something so big that no matter what you're doing, you can be focusing on that one goal. <coughs> the example here is I'm living my life's purpose every day. Or it could be I'm a world-class problem solver. <coughs> something like that. So important things to think about. Your number one goal. And usually for my daily goals, this is my goal notebook, and I'll just have those goals right in there. And I put the number one goal right at the top. And then I write those other goals. And it ingrains it in your brain. It just keeps you re on track. Any questions with the goals? Good. And that habit of writing out your top 10 goals twice per day. Try it out. Try it out for a, for a week or so and see what happens. I think it starts to help you have that uh, attitude of positive at expectation. Because actually, if you study the subconscious in your brain, your brain doesn't really care if what you're saying is true or not. Its job is to fulfill what you're asking it to do, the subconscious. So if you say in there, whatever, my net worth is $32 million, then your brain just goes, okay, well, let's start to work on that, whatever it is. I'm the best dad I can be. Uh, I weigh 170 pounds, or whatever it is, in the present tense, so that your brain can get a handle on it and go, okay, that, those, that's my marching orders. And the audio journal. I've always worked on journaling, but uh, usually it's by hand. I'm, I'm a writer. I love writing. But I found now it's, it's too time consuming for me to be able to sit down and write a proper journal entry every day, like on a laptop or a notebook. Now, there's been research that says that you have a lot more neural connections if you write by hand as opposed to typing on a laptop. You're making more connections. It's more meaningful if you do it by hand. So that's uh, one in the area of uh, writing by hand. But I found in either, in either better way, even better way, the audio journal. I'll use a, uh, I've got it here, a digital recorder that I keep in the car. And you just talk into it. And 
But the key is, I think I wrote some steps down here. Oh, it's on your handout. Increasing awareness of your day and your experiences. Jot them down. I have a little uh, notebook that I do. <clears throat> I just keep this in the car. And jot down, I call them little creative snippets. You know, just goofy stuff. My son made French toast for the first time that morning. They made a joke uh, about something for breakfast. And, you know, I mowed the lawn listening to Ozzy Osbourne. I don't know. Whatever you want to remember, pumpkin picking, went to the Hanover Theater and saw Phantom of the Opera. So those are all just little um, markers for you to go later on when I'm driving home or I'm stopped somewhere. I'll just take out that list and put on my digital recorder and just gab and riff about all those different little points. So I know what I'm talking about and I'm just getting out all my thoughts. Now some of the benefits of this is that you're venting, you're getting it all out. You're also making new connections. You know, you're making sense of the day. It's a really good habit to do. And then I take it a step further, you know, and there's even a lot of uh, articles. Here's Harvard Business Review. I looked up two articles here. Want to be an outstanding leader? Keep a journal. The more senior your job title, the more you need to keep a journal. Reflection, self-awareness, important elements of leadership that you learn by keeping a journal. Stopping the day, processing it, looking through, making sense of things, making connections, you can't just go through life and just be always on the next thing. You've got to put on the brakes a couple times, and it doesn't take long. It takes me between five to eight minutes, I would say, to do my little audio journal entry every day. And then I take it one more step. I mean, I'm a nerd about this, but is I have an Excel sheet. And so I, even, uh, I put one on my website for you if you wanted it. It's an Excel sheet already loaded up like this. And the B column, you put the date. And then the left, you put whatever, you know, like an index of a book. So today, something uh, interesting and meaningful about today, this leadership day, you met me. Roles intro, we talked about the audio journal, project magic, we're going to talk about goals, all that stuff. And then you can search. You know, sometimes I'll just click on this and do the, uh, you know, sort A to Z here. And then you can see all those things. And then uh, same thing with the date. So it's a nice thing to do. All right. You guys are a great audience. I wanted to pass around this book, too. This is a book by Donald Miller. I don't know if anybody has heard of this one. Story, building Your Story Brand. And I found it to be very helpful for what I'm doing and, he ta and also for designing the website. He talks about how um, a lot of us often talk about ourselves first and make us the hero when we're talking to a prospect or a customer, when you have to make the customer the hero and have them see themselves being the hero of the day. So it's a really interesting take, and it's a lot about clarifying the message. He helped me um, simplify my website a lot. Instead of having all that stuff at the top, he says just have one big picture with your audience enjoying your product and then a headline, very simple. Time management skills, buy here. And it uh, works out a lot better. So I'll pass this out and you can look at it and pass it around. Good. At the end, I brought my guitar. We're gonna do a little song to wrap up everything here. Since I'm a music therapist, so you know. Now projects, you have a lot of projects on your plate, I'm sure. A lot of things, small projects, large projects. You know, an example of a large project that I have is my business. So what's it look like a year from now? That's a big time project. Uh, myself, health-wise, what am I going to look like in a year? My kids' lives, what are they going to be working on or achieved in that one year? And smaller stuff like this uh, presentation was a small project. I went through the same system. So let's go through the seven stages here. And I got this idea from, I'm creative, I do a lot of uh, drumming and guitar playing. I wrote a book on how to play the drums for kids. It's called Just What the Doctor Ordered. And I used this system. I started to think all the, the big projects I've worked, how, what do they all have in common? What stages do they all go through? And I came up with this. The first is to identify the spark. A lot of people just start in at stage five, action. They're doing it, trying to get it done. 
but you've got to back up. Identifying the spark, you've got that emotional connection with this project. And for me, for this drum book, I was doing a lot of drum lessons, and kids were having a similar problems with technique. And then I wrote a, uh, was writing them compositions to play that put their specific problems in the piece so they had to work on. And we started doing a piece called The Mad Scientist. And they were into it. They were excited. So I started to get inspired by the mad scientist idea. And then I was looking up pictures and everything about mad scientists, how they had that, they concocted these clever little antidotes for all those specific problems. So that was the spark for my project. And you have to do the same thing. If you don't have that emotional spark, and if you're working as a group too, what kind of connection, what, what is that main idea that gets you excited about it? Stage two is this gathering stage. That's getting all the info. There was a uh, choreographer named Twyla Tharp who talks about how she, when she starts a project, she just gets a cardboard box and just starts throwing stuff in. You know, it might be CDs, it might be cloth, it might be pictures, and just start putting everything in there for that. That's the gathering stage. Brainstorming, just ask a lot of questions. All right? The more you do all these stages, the more full and your project will have more depth. And then the structure, those are the big things. If this is a book, how many chapters is it? If it's um, creating, a, um, planning a big party or a wedding, you know, what are the main areas? That's the structure part, the big pieces, the brass tacks. Then the action, that's getting it done. And the refining. A lot of people forget about the refining stage too. You know, when I was doing that drum book, to keep playing through those solos over and over and over again and try to just get them even better and better. Stephen King uh, wrote about a poem that he really liked that he talked about how good it was and how that it was almost like the poem had uh, support structures, cables inside that were so tightly connected they were like humming. You know, like you just have this, with the refining you just make it sparkle more and more and more and more. And we forget about that a lot. You gotta have a lot of repetition there with the refining stage. And then the completion stage. Want anybody want to share some of their projects? Yep. Um, I saw Mary Kay, so every month I have to maintain a goal of $225 to $200 for sales. Hmm. Um, and then from there, I have to work on my way up to a red jacket, and that's the direct distribution, so that way my reputation in the company is still pretty strong, but also like my like, reputation for my company is also pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Good. They seem to do a good job with keeping you on track, too, with being organized. Anyone else? Some big projects? Small projects? All right. Um, here are some examples of how I could see you benefiting from this workshop. For example, if you have an increase in self-awareness and do better in your job interview, Companies want people that know themselves more, have that awareness of themselves. So self-awareness is key. You'll see that everywhere, self-awareness, self-awareness. I'm working on a workshop that's just going to be about self-awareness and how the more you know yourself, the better you can do your job, the more you can give of yourself to your job for, for corporations. Better relationships because of an increased awareness of your role transitions and your roles like someone shared, that they had more roles, there's more richness to your life than you even know. And every year those roles change. You went from high school senior, preparing college, to being at college, to working you know, more as a professional, and moving through, and then in the future, a lot different. Homeowner, families, that sort of stuff. More reflective because of journal writing. And if you can get in the habit, I've I've done this audio journal thing for, um, I think, three months now. And uh, it's very easy. It takes nothing. And it's really cool. And plus, it's impressive. I've used it already with a couple clients. When I talk to them, go, oh, you know what? When we talked August 31st, you know, you, you really up your game. You start getting the best ideas of your life because you, you have that creative process with journal writing. Journaling, you're always uh, stirring the pot. You always got more and more ideas, so you start to get better ideas. Save yourself months or even years because of goal clarity. Writing those goals. 
list 10 goals and, and write them twice a day. That, uh, that idea I got from Grant Cardone, too. He, he could show you all the stacks of notebooks all through the years of what he was working on. Thinking bigger than ever before because of goal setting, like the 10x rule. And complete projects with more depth and substance, less stress. Make your projects sparkle with having those seven stages that you go through. Be very thorough. Good. All right, anybody want to share one of their uh, takeaways? Something that you learned today, something that you can use? Yes? <laughs> All right. Good. Great. What do you What do you think you're gonna do? Like, what are you gonna? I think um, I kind of have to reconsider my goals in my life and really identify what uh, what my priorities are. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I kind of left that out. Sometimes we have roles that are difficult, right? We all have a role that's at least one that is uh, the more challenging one. So. Being aware of that. Yes, any others? Yes. My goals don't always have to be active and in the now, but they can also be passive and come down the line. OK. Anything else? Yes. Um, it's important to take a minute and pause and actually consider each step in your process to be mm. successful. Great. Reflecting, yes. Not just being in it all the time. And these are all things that help you dig into your your brain power. You know, if you're just um, involved with your phone all the time and kind of surface level stuff, you're not going to be able to dig in. Good. All right. Well, I put together a little tune for you. I've got some shakers, so we can have some shaker sounds. All right. Well, great job, everybody. Uh, Especially with this awesome day, it was, I appreciate that you're able to uh, sit and listen, be a great audience. This song, we put together some of all the things we talked about today to kind of wrap it up. Yeah. Good. Oh, Warren Buffett's a stud. He's worth the 90 billion, I think. If you haven't identified your roles, your self-awareness stinks. Oh, don't be hoity-toity and think you know it all. Oh, feed your passions, hobbies, and interests, and you'll have yourself a ball. All right. Oh, Dr. King had a dream. JFK had a vision. Start a daily audio journal now. That's a wise decision. Now we spent some time together. You defined your priority. Good. Oh, use the seven stages of project management, and you'll accomplish them with ease. Good. All right. Drum solo. Shaker solo. Good. Oh, clarify your goals. That's the name of the game. Focus on your mission. Things will never be the same. Oh, thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure knowing you all. Well, no more wasting tomfoolery so you can have a productive fall. 